video I want to talk about pandas data frames. What is a pandas data frame and why should we use one? We'll look at how to create one and what they do. Let's jump over full screen to get started. First, let's look at the documentation for what a data frame is. According to the pandas documentation, this is what a pandas data frame is. But let's break down each part so we fully understand it. I'll use a graphic on screen to explain as we go too. Two-dimensional just means that we have two planes to our data. Size mutable just means that once we create the two-dimensional workspace that we have, we're able to change the sizes of either of those dimensions. Potentially heterogeneous. That just means that we're able to store many different data types in a data frame. Tabular just means that we're working with a table. So we'll have rows and columns. Data structure just means that it's a type of format that we can store our data into. With labeled axis. This just means that for our columns, we have headings, how you would in an Excel sheet. And then for our rows, we have an index column. Arithmetic operations align on both rows and column labels. That just means that we're able to do operations on both a column and a row in our data frame. Can be thought of as a dictionary-like container for series objects. The same way that we talked about in the dictionary video, which I'll link below if you're interested in watching it, we have keys and we have key values. Here we just have headings and heading values that we can use. The primary pandas data structure. Understanding the pandas data frame is essential for this series because it is the main thing that we'll be using in all of our projects. Scrolling down on the pandas documentation page, we see that we have an attributes section. Attributes are just properties of the data frame. So we can call out many of these properties just by using these keywords. There's also a lot of methods listed on the documentation page. These are just functions that we can apply to the data frame already built into the pandas package. From this example, it's easy to see the correlation between a pandas data frame and an excel sheet. However, there's some advantages to using a pandas data frame instead of an excel workbook. Once you move data out of an excel environment and into a python one, you have access to a ton of new modules and packages that you can use in your computations. Pandas already has some attributes and methods, but there's so many more that I'll show on screen that you can use too. One huge advantage of using pandas data frames is that you don't have to code them VBA. Oh my no! No, God, please, no! Instead, we're able to leverage a huge community that uses Python to code, and we can use this to our advantage in our Python projects. But now let's talk about how we can build a data frame. Jumping over to a text editor, the first thing we need to do is import pandas as pd, and then import numpy as mp. There's cleaner ways of making a data frame, but we'll use series just to show a point in this example. Let's say series a is equal to pd.series, and then we'll pass in a list. So let's pass in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Then let's print this to our terminal to see what the return is. So saving our script and then opening up a command prompt or a terminal, depending on your operating system. We'll type in Python 3 and then the name of your file. So mine is pandas tutorial.py. We see that we returned a series of the values we put in. So 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. A series also gives us the index values. So we have 0 through 4 here. This is an automatic feature of a series if you don't explicitly state it. Let's explicitly state this in the line below. So series A equals pd.series, the same way that we did before, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, comma, and then index equals A, B, C, D, and E. Now, when we save this and print this again, we should see that the index values have changed. So executing the script again, we now have an index value of A, B, C, D, E. But this is just a one dimensional series. A data frame is a two dimensional object like we talked about. Let's create a second series to combine with our series A to make a data frame. So series B is pd.series. We'll pass in any values that we want. So let's say nine, eight, seven, six, five. And then let's denote the index. So index equals A, B, C, D, and then let's use F. So notice how the F and the E are two different values on the index. This will be important later on. And then we'll close off the series with the parentheses. Now let's create a dictionary object with these two series. So we'll say dict A is equal to curly brackets, series A, colon, and then the variable series A. I've done a whole tutorial on Python dictionaries. So if this is uncomfortable to you, feel free to watch that video. We'll put a comment and then series b with the variable series b as the values. Now to create the data frame, we'll use the variable df and then pd.dataframe and then pass in the dict a. Then we'll print df. We'll save and execute. And now when we print the data frame, we see that we returned a two-dimensional object with an index column, heading columns, and then values under each of those headings. Notice how since we don't have an index e in this series, 
and NAN is returned for that value in the index column. Also the same for series A with the F value. This will be useful to us whenever we start indexing values out of our data frame. The important takeaways of this video is the structure of the data frame. A data frame is composed of many series that can all be indexed. We'll be using these a lot in the upcoming videos, so we'll be sure to get plenty of practice. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Until next time.